We have learned more about this planet and its objects thanks to the Cassini space probe. We learned about the characteristics of Saturn's atmosphere and its ring system. Data about the satellites of the gas giant also became important. Of particular interest to us is Iapetus. Before Cassini began its mission, we had very little data on this satellite. The object is notable for its mountain range at the equator and its bicolor coloration. Thanks to Iapetus's recent research, we've learned that the satellite is synonymous with the word contrast. And it's not just the two contrasting surface colors. So what secrets does Iapetus hold? And why is it called a strange satellite of the solar system? Italian astronomer Giovanni Cassini observed Saturn through his telescope in 1671. Then the scientists saw a small object near the planet, which was making a revolution around Saturn. This is how the gas giant satellite Iapetus was first spotted. After some time, Giovanni Cassini discovered other satellites of Saturn. But Iapetus remained his most remarkable discovery. When Iapetus was first spotted, it was on the western side of the planet. About 39 days later, Giovanni Cassini continued to observe Iapetus. He hypothesized that by this time the satellite would have moved to the east side. To Cassini's surprise, this did not happen. Iapetus was not on the east side or the west side. It was nowhere to be found. Can you imagine? Surely you'd be upset that an object you'd recently discovered had simply disappeared. Fortunately, Iapetus reappeared, but 79 days later. Remarkably, it was exactly where Giovanni Cassini first saw it. So why did Iapetus disappear? That remained unknown until 1705. Then Cassini saw a satellite on the east side of Saturn with a more advanced telescope. It turned out that while in this part, Iapetus had a decrease in brightness of two astronomical units. This is why Giovanni Cassini did not see it in the eastern part when he used another telescope. The scientist realized this, so he continued his exploration. Before that, he correctly concluded that most likely Iapetus was just in the decent capture of the gas giant, and one side of the object would be darker than the other. This was subsequently confirmed. For this reason, it seems to us on Earth that Iapetus's brightness level is constantly changing. Iapetus is the third largest of Saturn's satellites. Only Titan and Rhea are larger than it. Iapetus has an average diameter of 1471 kilometers. It has a density value of 1.8 grams per centimeter cubed. This is a very small value considering that it is slightly larger than that of liquid water on Earth. It is assumed that the composition of Iapetus is dominated by water ice. The distance between the satellite and Saturn is 13.5 million kilometers. This is the largest distance among the main satellites of the planet. For all that, Iapetus is in the tidal grip of its planet. As we've mentioned many times in previous videos, in tidal capture, the satellite is always turned to one side of the planet. Iapetus's orbit is tilted slightly. Given the distance to Saturn, you can get a good look at the planet's rings from the satellite. I'll say a few more words about the inclination of the orbit. The angle of inclination is 15 degrees relative to the other components of the Saturn system. Why this is the case, we can't say for sure yet. This characteristic of Iapetus is similar to Neptune's satellite Triton. Unlike Titan and Rhea, about which we have already talked a lot, we still know too little about Neptune's companion. The composition of Iapetus is virtually identical to that of Saturn's other major satellites. It is assumed that Iapetus formed from elements that traveled around the gas giant in its early stages of development. Iapetus's tilted orbit could have been formed by processes characteristic of the early planetary system. The satellite could have migrated due to gravitational interactions with the gas giant Saturn. 
That's probably what caused Iapetus's orbit to shift. We don't see a significant change in the shape of the orbit. It is, in fact, almost circular. This is called low eccentricity of the orbit. The level of eccentricity that the satellite undergoes is quite low. For this reason, there are a large number of craters on the surface of Iapetus because the surface does not level out over time. Probably, the inner layers of the satellite are devoid of geological activity. Thanks to Cassini, we have images where we can see some of the huge craters. Some of them are over 350,000 meters in diameter. The largest of them is a crater called Turgis, which is located in the dark part of Iapetus. It has quite high edges, about 15,000 meters. So this crater can be considered one of the largest in the solar system. What do you think is Iapetus's most notable characteristic? I'm sure you'll mention his two-tone coloration. And I would agree with you. It's a feature of Iapetus that sets it apart from the other satellites. For a long time, scientists could not find an answer to the question of why the color of one area is so contrasting to another area. The satellite is always turned with its light side towards Saturn. If we look from Earth towards Saturn, when Iapetus faces the gas giant, we see its dark side. That's why it appears as if the brightness level of the satellite periodically decreases. The dark part of Iapetus is called Cassini Regio. However, why the surface of the satellite has such a remarkable coloration remains unknown at this point. It is known for sure that the surface of Iapetus, where the dark part is located, is covered with carbon and a layer of dust of about 30 centimeters. It is highly probable that Iapetus contains organic compounds similar to those on the surface of comets. There is a theory that the surface of Iapetus is covered with a layer of elements from another satellite of Saturn, Phoebe, which is at a farther distance from its planet. Under the influence of sunlight, such elements can leave the surface and move in space. So they could have traveled to Iapetus, this may be the answer to the question of why the satellite has a two-color coloration. However, such processes must occur constantly with a certain periodicity. Since there are few young craters in the dark part of Iapetus, there is another theory. According to it, the satellite may have volcanic activity. Thanks to it, dark materials get to the surface. The dark coloring may be due to the eruption of hydrocarbons. This effect is only intensified when hydrocarbons react with solar radiation. A ring of matter has formed around Saturn due to the satellite Phoebe. With the Weiss Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer in 2015, we learned that the size of this ring is much larger than previously thought. The size of this object reaches about 300 radii of Saturn. Based on this data and information from the Cassini spacecraft, the theory of the darkening of one side of Iapetus was derived, which is now considered the most likely. Iapetus is in Saturn's tidal grip, so its rotation period is very long. One day on the satellite equals 79 Earth days. From this, we conclude that the temperature cycle during the day is quite long. The elements in the dark part can absorb heat and raise the surface temperature for a long time. As you know, the light parts are able to reflect light much better, which means that the dark side absorbs much less heat. As this heat builds up, the surface in the dark side begins to emit volatiles, including ice. these elements move to the lighter part of the Iapetus after a while. This results in an even greater darkening of the dark side of the satellite, and the contrast between the light and dark parts only intensifies. So we learned more about the interesting features of Saturn's satellite that we mentioned at the beginning of the video. Iapetus is considered a strange satellite in the solar system, not only because of its bicolor. It is also notable for the fact 
that on its equator, there is a mountain range called the Iapetus Wall. Its length is about 1,300 kilometers, almost as long as the equator itself. The height of this mountain formation is 13 kilometers. The width is 20 kilometers. If we look at the mountain range on the light part of Iapetus, we will notice that here it is not a continuous mountain chain, but several mountains alternating with flatter areas. Thanks to Cassini, we learned the first data about this mountain formation. For this reason, the Iapetus Wall is sometimes also called the Voyager Mountains. However, scientists have not yet been able to determine exactly what factors are responsible for the appearance of this mountain. There are several theories. According to one version, the mountain formation arose as a result of geologic activity in the early stages of the formation of the satellite. At that time, Iapetus had a shorter rotation period and a higher surface temperature. The mountain range could have formed from material that came to the surface and solidified. There's another theory that says that Iapetus absorbed one of Saturn's rings billions of years ago. The mountain range is a cluster of elements from that ring, but the theories are not limited to this. There is also a suggestion that in the past, the satellite Iapetus collided with another object, and this collision led to the object becoming a satellite of the satellite. It is assumed that over time, the distance between Iapetus and its companion decreased, and at some point, the unknown object shattered into pieces, leaving behind a cluster of elements that formed the mountain. This theory gives an answer to the question of why the mountain formation was formed exactly on the equator. However, so far there is no definite answer to the question of the origin of the Iapetus wall. There are currently no plans for a mission to explore this satellite, but it is bound to happen sooner or later. And what feature of Saturn's satellite did you find most interesting? If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and like it. Cosmic discoveries are sure to fill your life with exciting meaning. On our channel, you will find only the best. Most importantly, thanks to an expensive mission, mankind has learned more about the world surrounding the Earth. If you are interested in stories about distant planets, check us out more often. We have a lot more interesting things to tell you.